Um, we're here today to talk about playing it safe. What are the inherent risks of electricity and what can we do to uh, keep up to date with standards? Um, we'll start off though by explaining a little bit about who we are and what we do. So I'm gonna hand over to Richard, away you go. Yeah, so our mission really, what, why are we here? What's the purpose uh, of the organisation? Well, we exist obviously to prevent deaths, uh, injuries, uh, and any damage that may be caused by electricity. Uh, so we ensure that everyone in the UK, we can use electricity safely in their home, of course, not just today, but also tomorrow. We've got a, a rapidly changing global environment uh, and on an increasingly electric world, our mission becomes obviously more vital than ever. We've also got to think about the uh, decarbonisation of uh, heat and transport. It's going to bring many changes to the future home, obviously from heat pumps, solar panels, EV charging. Um, they're going to create safety challenges uh, moving forward. And of course, there's also new technologies as well, rising online shopping. We've got unregulated marketplaces. Those also bring new threats. Uh, and of course, they're exorbitated by the rise in the cost of living. So some of the things that we are uh, getting involved in day to day. Richard, can you just remind the uh, people that are with us this morning, what are the inherent risks of electricity? Ultimately, electric shock, which if severe enough could lead to defibrillation, you know, could lead to death. Um, and depending on um, the level of uh, current, et cetera, could lead to severe burns and ultimately could lead to fire. Uh, any of those, we, we're trying to limit the risk, bring the risk down as much as possible. None of those are pleasant uh, at all. Okay, thanks, Richard. And obviously we're here at Electrical Safety First to reduce those risks that Richard just spoke about. We do this in many ways. We've got our policy team that are lobbying for change uh, with government. Um, you may have seen some media um, work recently uh, where we've been talking about electrical meter tampering. Um, this is a constant thing that where the media team are pulling together the information from the electrical installation safety team, myself and, and Richard, the safety product team. And we've got an excellent uh, media team that pull all this information together and get it out to consumers and professionals in, in many different ways. So uh, sort of three main parts of who we are, electrical safety first, uh, right there. We're going to be focusing more on the installation side today, obviously, because that's where myself and Richard uh, are from in that particular team. And we're going to be looking at how we can keep others up to date with safety standards around electricity. So within the installation side, um, we look at equality, so everyone in the UK uh, has the same electrical safety in their home, of course, including free electrical checks, where we've got the most vulnerable people. We ensure that the government includes electrical safety in the net zero strategies. Uh, we ensure effective regulation and standards, and we help grow the number of competent installers required for future demand that ensure consumers can find uh, then simply and easily um, and try and have a better understanding of, you know, what a competent installer is. Um, so there's a lot of work going on in terms of making our electrical installation safer. Thanks, Richard. And on that note, obviously, we, we're on about standards. We're on about providing guidance. In this presentation, you may have already noticed a, a QR code. There are a series of QR codes embedded. Uh, this is guidance that we provide for consumers on our website. So there is a QR code on the bottom right of the screen. This is a section of our website that provides up-to-date safety advice for landlords, tenants, consumers of electricity, anyone that may not necessarily have a technical bias. So we've got two particular sections of our website. The one that says guidance, as on the screen now, is for those non -necessar not necessarily technically uh, minded people. So we're trying to provide guidance on electrical safety and staying safe in a 
non-technical form on this particular section of the website. On the flip side of this, we've also got a second section, which is holds our professional resources. And again, there's an additional QR code on the screen. And if you are professional or are more technically minded, there is a series of technical publications, which we'll get to shortly, which are available in this part of our, our website. So again, this is all keeping up to date with relevant recent um, industry standards and changes and getting that information through to contractors and professionals and consumers of electricity. So when we compile and put together um, some of this guidance, um, we don't do it on our own and we don't do it based on what me and Dave or any other members of the technical team believe. Um, we have many contributing organisations that you can see on the screen there that all come together over various meetings to agree um, best practice basically in industry. So some of them obviously are including our A, ESM, BEMA, British Gas, BSI, NIC, EIC, City and Guilds, EAL, ECA, EIT, NAPIT, Spaces and Select. So all of these organisations, including ourselves, will come together and get a collective industry view. Uh, and then that way, everybody's kind of got the same views and agreed the same uh, approach and same way forward. Uh, and then that, you know, brings a consistency within industry and everybody can say, you know, that's the uh, guidance that industry follows. And then everyone's kind of singing from the same hymn sheet there. That's great. Thanks, Rich. I think building on from what Rich has just said there, the, the information that we provide, especially the professional resources, by involving all these stakeholders that you can see on the image, on the slide, it gives the publications and the guidance real weight, uh, weight which we wouldn't have if it was just our own view. So we're really proud of the fact that our guidance that we provide is all in conjunction with these um, organisations that you can see on this particular slide. It's something we are um, proud of at uh, Electrical Safety First. Okay. <clears throat> so one area of the professional resources, these are probably going to be um, the resources that some of you viewing right now are more familiar with. And that's our best practice guides. Uh, again, there's a QR code on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, which will take you straight to that particular uh, area within the website. So these best practice guides are produced by us and all of the organisations on the previous slide. Um, these um, are currently being updated to reflect the changes in BS7671, wiring regulations. Um, a couple have been updated fairly recently. So we've got Best Practice Guide 1, which is a particular important one with regards to electrical safety and the inherent risks, as that is for changing consumer units. And the risks are, uh, you know, quite large. Would you agree, Richard, changing consumer units? It's quite Absolutely, large. yeah. I mean, there's, there's a number of considerations um to consider uh, obviously especially in terms of safety um let alone the, the technical requirements of uh, bs 7671 and it is it is a guidance document there that anyone can download for free as many times as you like um and because it's been agreed by uh, all the organizations on the previous uh, slide then it is as it says on the cover best practice um and it's designed to give designers electricians ordinary people some good information um, without it being too technical uh, and that's what we try to do is explain some of the more technical elements um, to BSF 7671 and other building approved documents and other standards in a simple format that everyone can kind of follow and understand um, that's the, that's the basis of them but yeah very important uh, guidance note that best practice guide one yeah, I think you've hit, you've hit the nail on the head there, Richard. Yeah, we're trying to provide this information in in sort of simple sort of terms for everyone to to understand. Uh, the next one in there is best practice guide two, which is on safe 
uh, isolation. Uh, extremely important with the with the risks of working with electricity. That is something that um, Richard and I used to promote quite a lot because we're from an educational background. Uh, worked in, in further education for a number of years. That was something we promoted with our apprentices and adult learners. Um, we've got guides for uh, microgeneration systems. We've got best practice guide four, which is the industry standard for uh, electrical installation condition reports and coding to try and align industry. We'll sort of talk a little bit more about that later. Um, We've got guidance on test instruments, on retrofit of LED lamps and things like that. So we've got some comprehensive guides and we've got some shorter guides where, where required. We don't necessarily need a huge 300-page guide on uh, changing lamps and things like that. So an area where you can go on our website, as Richard said, they're all free publications. They're all produced by multiple stakeholders and, and companies, the big hitters within the electrical industry. Scan that QR code and uh, check those best practice guides out. And when these are updated or, or changed, Dave, is that done overnight? Is that a quick five-minute task? Once these publications have been agreed and we've made any changes with our stakeholders, everyone's happy with the amendments and the changes. These will be updated pretty much as soon as we press send on that email to our team. Our, our, um, our tech team and our media team are, 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 are brilliant. I'm not, I'm not just sort of, you know, just saying that for the purpose of this, but we send the information through and it is, it is on there. It is updated pretty much with a click, click of, the, of the button once it's ready. So these, you might see the designs might change similar to one and four. Those will be um, the most recent uh, issues of these guides. So, yeah, scan that code, have a little look through. Fantastic resources available for free to anyone. So there are some other guides um, on our website, um, not just mainly for um, electricians or other technically minded people. There are other uh, guides as well for ordinary people. Um, on the on the screen, we've got minimum provision of electrical socket outlets in the home. Gives us a bit of guidance on the number of sockets uh, that we should have in each room, etc. Other considerations for maybe when you've got USB sockets. We've also got a guide there uh, for installers when making connections in consumer units. Again, you can use that in conjunction with uh, best practice guide number one. Again, it's exactly. really. Really with that guide, Rich, there, what's it, what's important in that in that guide with regards to electrical risk and safety with the consumer units? What's particularly important information we're trying to get out to the to the professionals? To use it in conjunction with best practice guide one, really, you know, to consider, you know, make a number of considerations before you just go ahead and start replacing someone's consumer unit when there may be no need. You, you might have to think about uh, additional protection with additional uh, protective devices, et cetera. So there's quite a lot of considerations to, to think about there. We've got things in there such as talk settings as well, haven't we, Rich? Um, yeah, I thought we manufacturer's instructions, which, you know, we're all, I suppose, a little bit guilty of that. When we buy ourselves something new, take it out of the box, plug it in, you know, until something doesn't quite work correctly. But it's vitally important. Uh, specifically with uh, uh, consumer unit manufacturers that we abide by their instructions to avoid again. Some of the things we spoke about earlier, you know, electric shock, fire, etc. So there is there is some really good guidance in in that as well. And what's this, and what's this particular guide on on the right hand side? I quite like the look of that one. <laughs> uh, something that we've uh, been updating recently. I know that you've had a lot of uh, input into that, Dave, in terms of uh, electrical safety in communal areas of uh, residential properties. So your your uh, entry and exit uh, hallways, staircases, uh, etc. In communal areas, gives us some guidance to landlords. I know that you've been working uh, quite closely on that one, Dave. Yeah, we've been working with uh, Armour uh, on that one. That is a future guide, so that that will be appearing soon in the guidance area of the website, as shown on the previous slide. So. 
keep an eye out for that one. And what are some of the risks within those communal areas then? We've Well, we've got things like, you know, have we got adequate lighting for people escaping the event of emergency and fire? Um, you know, is there, um, have we got, you know, protection against uh, electric shock present in all the accessible areas, the corridors, the stairwells, things like that? Um, some really good content within within that guide and who who's responsible for, for each section. We talk about things like BNOs, DNOs, the, the tenants, landlords, and things like that. So not something that I'll cover in detail, obviously, today, but some guidance that will be coming through very soon, we're, we're hoping, um, to highlight the, the risks and you know safety standards with electricity. And that will be a free download again, will it, Dave? All free, yeah. Obviously, we're a non non for profit UK charity. Everything we do and produce is is free. So, fantastic. Okay, another guide currently in development. It's been around for for a little while now. We, we're putting the finishing touches to this, and something we're particularly proud of in the current climate. And that is best practice guide ten. That is focusing on a minimum specification for inspection and testing in private rented accommodation. Okay, the whole point of this guide is to provide clarity and transparency. As currently, the industry is a little bit misaligned with what's included in an electrical installation condition report and what's not included in the gaps where we get fixed equipment and. PV systems and portable appliances, that they fall through the gap. So what we're trying to do is highlight what should be done. This is a minimum specification. That's what inspectors should be delivering when conducting an EICR, Electrical Installation Condition Report. And it's what the recipient of that certificate should be expecting. So this is going to be coming out very, very soon finishing touches to this and to try and bring everything up to a standard. So landlords, tenants, they know what to expect. The contractor, they know what they're meant to do. Um, you know, we're trying to iron out any five minute certificates sort of written out in, in the van, aren't we, Rich? And, and yeah, raise, so that, raise that standard. Yeah, it's we're working with something that could kill you and others. It's as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than gas. So let's let's raise the bar. That's why that's why we're here. And again, is it, this going to be agreed by the uh, our partner organisations and partners within the state? So this is going to be industry fed. Yeah. So we're all going to agree on this. Industry driven, industry led. It's a best practice guide. We've got all of those organisations involved on the slide. If you do download these guides, have a look on the second page, you'll see everyone involved. This doesn't go through to be published until everyone's agreed. So And this is due out this is due out quite soon, this guide. Quite soon, yeah. Yeah, okay. quite soon. Can't put a date on it yet, but we'll keep your eye out on the website. So this should this should be a good guide for industry in general, because there are a lot of landlords uh that aren't really sure as to what should be included yeah. in, in the EICR, how long it should kind of take. Yeah. You know, yeah. as you know, that, that there are some things that they need to make sure of before an inspector goes. If, you know, if, if all the rooms are full of furniture or the, they don't have a supply or, you know, yeah. certain things like that, it's it's great guidance for that, isn't it? But also they know what to expect as well. Yeah, exactly. That's what, we, that's what we're saying. It's a minimum specification, clarity, and transparency for everyone across the board there. So keep your eyes out for that one. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the working groups that we, uh, as an organisation, we play an active part in. Um, again, following on from Best Practice Guide 10 that we're currently developing there. Uh, we do get involved with, uh, with some other working groups. This one in, in particular, the Electrical Installation Condition Report Working Group. Again, we aim uh, here to establish a consistent approach and we're trying to improve uh, the quality of electrical installation condition reports. Um, we were also the main driving force uh, behind the current legislation that was brought in um, 
in the private rented sector um, and across each devolved nation. So we did a lot of work as an organisation in getting this um, into legislation. Um, again, it's all about safety, safety of the tenants that live in these houses or properties. Uh, and again, we're working, working actively uh, within an improvement working group, looking at forms, uh, looking at, again, minimum standards, et cetera, to try and make this better and safer, ultimately. That's what we're working towards here. Um, who, who do we have involved in this working group, Richard? Is it is it just us splashing a few ideas out? Or <laughs> who do we have? Absolutely not. It's a lot of the organisations pre in previous slides, but also at... Um, uh, local councils and uh, housing associations, other working uh, groups, governments as well. Um, all of us, ultimately, our approach is to try and improve uh, the whole uh, EICR condition report area, you know, within the industry, basically. We're all trying to come together to improve it, whether it be make changes to the form so it's easier for the recipient to actually read it and understand it, uh, make it easier for the inspector doing the doing the inspection so he's got clearer um, boxes that he needs to fill out and include making the, the, the English better to understand so it's more or less non-technical um, given an idea on the, you know the average cost or the average duration and as you've previously said what's included in it is it just a fixed installation is it all the equipment that's within that installation is it both is it the solar PV is it the EV charging you know it's it, it's it's making it clearer as to what's included and what's not. And if something's not included, then we need to make sure that somebody else uh, inspects that piece of equipment or other part of the installation so we know that it's all safe. That's it. It goes back to that transparency and clarity again, doesn't it, that we've mentioned. I mean, the, the, the people that have, the members that have joined us recently, uh, we've got letting agents, we've got people from the department are levelling up. English government, Welsh government, Scottish government. So again, the, this working group to try and improve the standards of electrical installation condition reports is being driven by multiple angles, the recipients, the professionals in industry and, and government. So we're working with, it's a real sort of round table effort all sort of pushing in in the right direction to raise uh, safety standards okay our other um group that we um typically have meetings on around once a month is our wiring regulations advisory group or rag for short i prefer uh, using the acronym rag You'll see on the bottom part of the screen, there is a QR code that will take you to, to a section of the website. And within that particular section, which, I'll, which Rich will sort of talk you through uh, briefly in a second, is an area of um, technical guidance for new installations, rewired installations or similar, and areas for professional guidance on inspection uh, certification and reporting. Again, we've got multiple uh, people involved in this. They bring technical questions to us at Electrical Safety First. We analyse these queries and questions and we come to an agreement with all stakeholders involved and it gets published on our website. So it's an area in the professional resources as before and um, it's Q&As uh, to uh, some of them quite common uh, questions, aren't they, Richard? It's just to provide that sort of clarity. Do we need this? Do we need that? Is this okay? Is this safe if I do this? So it's another area of the web website, which obviously is, is free to use. And we're hoping to provide some, you know, technical guidance on uh Questions. We normally get quite a few when there's a regulation change or a corrigendum, don't we, don't we Richard? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there can be some confusion in terms of some of the more technical areas uh, of BS 7671 in terms of some of the technical requirements. And, the, the you know, the aim of, of this is to try and clear that up and give a concrete answer to a common question um, that comes up because it's not, or it may not be as easy to get a concrete answer out of the book so collectively we'll come together to agree 
an answer moving forward. And that way, everyone's agreed it. So if a question's asked, that's what we've got to do because that's been agreed. And that's, that's the approach that we try and take. Um, really, really useful part of the website. Not many people know it's there. Um, so again, as Dave said, there is a QR code that will take you straight to that. And it is split, as Dave's quite rightly said, into two sections. And we'll have a look at a couple of example questions for you. Before we do that, Rich, if you just want to talk us through the other representatives of the uh, RAG group there. <clears throat> again, it's um, all interested parties, as Dave said, stakeholders that are involved with it. Uh, again, a couple of different ones this time. Um, BEMA, Select, uh, LCL Awards, British Gas, NIC, OIC, Arctic, AP, uh, HC, ECA, Spaces, City and Guilds, Corga, ourselves, of course, uh, NHBC and NAPIT. So if a question gets put forward, then we've got representatives from all these organisations that will feed into to that group and collectively will come up with a suitable uh, answer to the question. So it, it's quite a, a long process, isn't it, Dave? It's not something that's no, it's, it's, decided straight away, you know? No, it's not something that's decided just on a whim. Um, the, the, the following next two slides, I'm just going to briefly introduce those. I'm conscious of, of time. There's just yeah. a couple of examples that I'm going to show you that are published on the website that has gone through this vigorous process within the RAG group with the members uh, shown on screen to get to a final point. So I'm just going to share with you now. So this is an example from the new rewired and similar installations part of the RAG um, uh, part of the website. So there's a typical question there, can I carry out alterations or additions to an installation that has inadequate earthing or bonding? I'm not going to go through the answer. It's just an example to show you what it looks like. So we've had the meeting. We've looked at the question. We've looked at a suitable answer. We've all agreed. It gets published on the website. We can see the question there. We can see an answer there. But the important thing is that we've got links to relevant safety standards, BS7671. So we always link these Q&As to a relevant regulation number, as you can see at the bottom. We've also got a second example, which is more on inspection, certification and reporting. It could be an EICR um, query. So again, a question, an answer and a link to relevant standards. And then what's coming up in the future? Um, what we're working on within Electrical Safety First. So a lot of work going on currently with the product team. Um, looking at uh, safety around micro uh, mobility, e-bikes and e-scooters, a uh, lot of um, press around those at the moment. We're going to be looking at smart homes because increasingly homes are getting smarter with uh, various new systems and different apps on your phone, etc. Uh, heating, lighting, ventilation, etc. EV charging, yeah. As we look to um, Decarbonise and move into the uh, EV charging side of things. More and more EV charging uh, is being installed throughout the, the infrastructure of the UK. So we're going to be uh, delving into that a bit more. Uh, and of course, future homes, integration of systems such as battery storage now, solar PV is, is coming, uh, heat pumps, etc. So there's going to be more guidance um, within those areas that we'll be working closely on. And once those are published, they'll be again free to download from our website. So a lot of work going on in terms of the future. Anything else you can cover there, Dave? Thanks, Rich. Yeah. Um, and then this next slide, we've got an upcoming event we want to make everyone aware of happening in November. It's the Electrical Product uh, Safety Conference, because obviously we, we are part of Electrical Safety First. It isn't just installation safety. We're looking at products as well. You may have seen some. Uh, information in the media regarding e-bikes and fake um, goods from uh, third-party sellers and things like that. So there is a, 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 um, a up-and-coming event. You can scan on the left-hand side, take you to, through to a YouTube video, and you can scan on the right if it's something that interests you, and you can register Um for that 16th of November at Church House in London.
Should be a good event. Looking forward to that, Dave. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. So we'll we'll hopefully see some of the viewers there from today. And finally, watch this space as well. Really looking forward to this. We are currently planning uh, an installation event. So the previous event Dave spoke about was for product safety. We're coming early in 2024 um, for an installation event, looking at all things we spoke about, promoting our best practice guides, um, but also looking at um, areas around solar PV, uh, battery storage, EV charging, and lots of other bits and pieces that we'll be working on. Uh, again, keep your eyes on the website. Uh, and as soon as we've got more details, we'll be having information there. And we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, we just want to thank everyone for this spending your time on this fairly early slot today, uh, listening to us talk about safety. Um, thanks, everyone. Obviously, we're electrical safety first. We were here to talk about playing it safe, the inherent risks, keeping up with safety standards. We're here to provide a safer future for our electric world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.